welcome back. We're going to continue our unit on statistics by looking at the normal curve and seeing how we can use it to find different probabilities and percentages of our data. Remember that the normal curve, the mean is represented by zero, and the standard deviation is just one. The total area under the curve is also equal to one, and it represents 100% of our data. Each section represents a certain amount of data. For example, between the mean and one standard deviation, that's represented by 34% of the data. Or the area of that section, changing it to a decimal, is 0.34. We can determine the probabilities and percentages based on these sections by looking at the area under the curve representing our data. For example, the average temperature in April is 72 degrees with a standard deviation of 12 degrees. What is the probability that tomorrow's temperature will be A within one standard deviation of the mean? Now remember that percentages talk about how much data is under the curve. It also represents the area of each section if we turn it to decimals. So we would have 0 0.0015, 0 0 0.0235, 0 0.135, 0 0.34, and so forth. So if we want to know what the chance or the probability that tomorrow's temperature will be between one standard deviation of the mean, we just have to look at the areas of each section. So one standard deviation of the mean means one below and one above the mean. So we're looking at the area from negative one to one. So this area represents 68% of my data, or the probability is going to be the areas added together so 0.34 plus 0.34 is going to give me a 0.68. So the probability that the temperature will fall within one standard deviation of the mean is 0.68. Or if we change that to a percentage, it's a 68% chance. Let's look at B. What's the probability that tomorrow's temperature will be between negative one and two standard deviations of the mean? So again, we're going to start at negative one and we want to know what the chance of that temperature be between negative 1 and 2. So we're looking at these three sections. So again, these sections represent 34% of the data, 34% of the data, and 13.5%. Or to find the probability, we just add up the areas. So it's 0 0.34 plus 0 0.34 plus 0.135, which gives us 0.815 or there's an 81.5% chance. Let's look at the last one. We want to know what the probability that tomorrow's temperature will be below two standard deviations of the mean. So here's two standard deviations of the mean, and we want to know what is the probability that it will fall below two. So we're looking at all six of these sections. So we simply have to add up the areas. We have 0 0.0015, 0 0.0235, 0 0.135, 0 0.34, 0 0.34, and 0.135. When you add those up, the area that is represented by this part of the graph is 0.975, or there's a 97.5% chance that tomorrow's temperature will be below two standard deviations of the mean. So the idea is pretty simple. These areas just tell us the probability. They give us the percentage of data that falls within each region. But what if I ask for the probability that the temperature will befall between negative 1.1 and 1.7 standard deviations? So look at this. Here's negative 1.1. And then here's 1.7 roughly. And so in order to find this probability, I have to look at this area of the graph. Well, we know that this section is 34% and this section is 34%, but this isn't a perfect square, so we can't just multiply by 0.7 and get this tiny area right here that's represented in the shaded region. Or we can't just multiply by a 0.1 to get this area because it's not a perfect square. This is curved. So how do we find out what this little area this part of the region is, or this part of the region is. So this is where Desmos and other calculators can come in handy. We can have the calculator find the area under the curve using Desmos. What we're going to do is we're going to go to Keyboard Functions, DIST for Distributions, and then Normal Distribution. Because we're talking about standard deviations, and let me show you what I mean. 
it says between negative 1.1 and 1.7 standard deviations. Or our other examples, within 1, between negative 1 and 2, below 2 standard deviations. Because we're talking about standard deviations, we're going to go ahead and leave the parentheses blank, which means the mean is 0 and the standard deviation is 1. Remember, with the normal curve, our standard deviation is 1 and our mean is 0. That's why we're leaving it alone. So we leave the parentheses blank. We're going to check the box that says find the CDF. Then what we're going to do is we're going to enter the minimum number and the maximum number. Notice that if it keeps going to the left forever, we already have a negative infinity there by default. And if it keeps going to the right forever, we already have infinity by default. So you just have to enter any numbers that aren't negative infinity or infinity. So going back to our example where I said between negative 1.1, which is right here, and 1.7, which is right here, we can have Desmos find this area very simply. So let's go to Desmos to do that. So I'm on Desmos, and I'm going to go ahead and click the keyboard. I'm going to go Functions, DIST, and I'm going to do Normal Distribution. Again, I'm going to leave the mean 0 and the standard deviation 1 because it's asking about standard deviations. I'm going to go ahead and click this box, and you'll see that it gives us a curve. It gives us the normal curve, and it shades the entire region. This is why the area is 1. But now I don't want the entire region. I want from negative 1.1 up until 1.7. Notice that it shades the region for you and then gives you the area. In this case, it's 0.82 rounded. So the probability that the temperature will be between negative 1.1 and 1.7 standard deviations of the mean is 0.82 or 82%. What about the next one? It says less than 2.1 standard deviations. So again, here's 2.1 standard deviations and I want everything less than that. So I'm talking about this entire area going on forever to the left. So again, I could have Desmos calculate that for me quickly. On Desmos, under keyboard, we're going to hit functions again, distribution and normal distribution. Leave the 0 and 1 alone. And in this time, we're going all the way to the left. So we're going to leave this as negative infinity and we're going up to 2.1. So it's everything less than 2.1. And as you can see, it's shaded just like I did in the drawing. In this case, it's 0.98 rounded. So the probability that tomorrow's temperature will be less than 2.1 standard deviations of the mean is 0.98, or there's a 98% chance. Finally, what about above negative 0.75 standard deviations of the mean? So negative 0.75 is probably roughly right here. And then I want everything above that. So I'm going to keep going to the right forever. So to find this total area, again, we're going to just use Desmos, and they'll give us an answer really quick. So I'm on keyboard. I go to functions, distribution, and normal distribution. Leave the mean and standard deviation alone at 0 and 1. Click the box. And now this time I'm going from negative 0.75 and then I'm going all the way to the right because I want everything above it, so I'm going to leave this as infinity. And as you can see, the shaded region looks just like the picture I drew. And in this case, the probability is 0.77 rounded, or 77%. So even if your standard deviations don't fall directly on the line, where we can just add up the regions directly, Desmos gives us a way that we could find partial areas and quickly get the probability and percentage. Why don't you go ahead and try this one with blood pressure? Finally, let's take it one step further. Sometimes they don't want the percentage or the probability, but they actually want a number. For example, if the average systolic blood pressure for females is 125 with a standard deviation of 10, and 140 women were to have their blood pressure taken, how many can we expect with the following? So in this case, we're going to find the probability or the percentage, but then multiply it with how many women are taking their blood pressure. So for example, in A, I want to know out of the 140 women, how many can we expect to have more than 0.4 standard deviations above the mean? So if this is 0.4, we're looking for how many women are going to be 0.4 or higher, so everything from 0.4 to infinity. So again, we can do this using Desmos. So we go to Keyboard, Functions, Distribution, Normal Distribution. 
leave the mean and standard deviation alone, click the box, and in this case, we're going from 0.4 to infinity. So 34.4% of the women will have a higher blood pressure than 0.4 standard deviations of the mean. So all we have to do is take the 140 women and multiply it by the percentage, which rounded is going to be 0.345. And you have 48.3 women, or we're going to just round it to 48 since you can't have a partial woman. So we can expect 48 women to have a blood pressure that's above 0.4 standard deviations of the mean. What about the next one? We want to know how many of those 140 women will have less than negative 0.6 standard deviations of the mean. So if here's negative 0.6, we want to know how many will fall below that. So again, all we have to do is find that probability and multiply it by the 140. So again, keyboard, functions, distribution, normal distribution, leave the mean and standard deviation alone, click the box. We're going all the way to the left, and then we have negative 0.6. So 27% of women will have a blood pressure that is negative 0.6 or lower. And so now all we have to do to find out how many of the 140 is we just do 140 times. And again, I'm going to round it, so 0.274. And so we get 38.36 or rounded 38 women. Finally, I want to know out of those 140 women, how many will fall between 1.2 and 1.5 standard deviations of the mean? So I'm just looking at a very slim margin between 1.2 and 1.5. And so again, Desmos makes this rather easy. We're going to do our usual keyboard, functions, distribution, normal distribution. Leave the mean and standard deviation alone. Click the box. And we want between 1.2 and 1.5. And so that's roughly 4.8%. So we're going to just do 140 women times the 0 0.048 rounded, and that gives us 6.7 women. We're going to round up in this case, that'll give us seven women. So we can expect seven women to have a blood pressure reading between 1.2 and 1.5 standard deviations of the mean. And so normal distribution allows us to find the probability or the percentages of data by looking at the area under the curve. And then calculators like Desmos allow us to get very precise in those calculations.